clean. It looks good. I appreciate it, man. Growth been, is awesome. I've been working hard uh, to get parameters where I wanted them. A lot of people's favorite tank in the studio. I remember when Jake set this up. This is the tank that Jake installed two closed loops on. Before we get started today, I wanted to send a huge congratulations to Windsor Adams on the birth of her son, Reef Adams. A happy, healthy baby boy. Please send your congratulations to Windsor in the comments section below. Today I'm going to take you on an abbreviated tour of how the Reef Builder Studio looks today. In the future, we will get into some of the tanks in more detail and some future projects that will be coming up in the studio. But today, I just wanted to get you back inside to see what's been happening. I won't keep you any longer. Let's go take a look. Hey, Reef Builders, it is Remy, and I'm here at the Reef Builder Studio. I'm just looking around here. Uh, it still exists. <laughs> and the man who's been keeping it all in check is Jack, our good friend from Merman's Reef. Good to see you. Good to see you as well. Uh, you've been doing this since the age of eight, correct? Yeah, I've been reefing since I was eight. Um, I've been in the industry working since I was 14. I got my first job at a shop here in uh, Denver. And then I started my shop that's also here in Denver when I was 18. Well, so, yeah. just at first glance, as, as we've been walking around here and kind of acclimating ourselves to the Rebuilder Studio, Clean, looks good. I appreciate it, man. Growth I mean, is awesome. I've been working hard uh, to get parameters where I wanted them and to get the sh this place as clean as Jake always had it. Well, let's head tank. over to the first tank that you see right when you walk in here, the uh, Red Sea Nano. Yeah, see let's go for it. Yep. This tank has been up and running for what? three, four years now? Something like that. Yeah. And it's a tank that got a lot of people into the hobby. I have customers that come in all the time into my shop and just like say things like, uh, like tell me that this is the video that got them into reefing. Uh, Cause Jake made it seem very achievable. You yeah. know, it's just like the way he did that whole video. And it is, I mean like, this is a very, pretty much maintenance free tank. I mean, you do a little bit here and there, clean the glass here and there. We're not going to mess with it. Cause I look at this, Aussie gold torture, that thing, is, <laughs> yeah. that thing is doing amazing and that's a coral that a lot of people, including myself, often struggle with. And then there's some Palithoa grandis in here, it's Jake loved. Big old orange tip frog spawn, uh, like a speckled rose anemone up there, some uh, orange oxide zoas, got like a dragon soul torch, like an Indo gold of some kind over here. Yeah. That's, that's the way to set up a tank, if yeah. you ask me, so. Well, let's move on to the next tank. So yeah, this is the Red Sea Peninsula. This is a tank that we've done, you know, some, minor tweaks in. Since restock, we've uh, added some more acros and, uh, and Montes and stuff like that to the tank. Yeah. And removed some corals that were just kind of like taking over the tank, like Digitata and Satosa that were both taking over like this entire left side of the tank here. Originally, this Jake had set this up, he wanted it to be very monopora heavy. Yeah, it was supposed to be- like you said, he like started adding acros. And, and acros then... lived in here. Like there's some really cool like loripes and stuff in here that have that have lived in here and look really good in here. Yeah. Like this bottle brush right here. That oh, thing is beautiful. like- beautiful. Just done amazing. It's really good looking coral. Yeah. There's some hoax mani back there that's doing really good. Of course uh, the like gigantic. Blue slimer. Immortal. Yep, immortal tort, Acropora tortuosa. Uh, Jake's signature tort. Flagship reef here. Yeah. Looking really good too. Yes, indeed. This tank has a lot of Stylophoras in it, has a good amount of Acros, a handful of Montes. It's a good mixed reef. There's a, some LPS, there's Softies, a little bit of everything in here. Uh, Sophastria was taking over, so that's something that we recently cut out quite a bit of. This entire section was all Sophastria. Yeah, I remember that. We reset this uh, grafted Digitata, and we also reset the torches because they were stinging the grafted Digitata. Mm -hmm cut back this Monty cap a little bit since it was shading this acro. Big ol' immortal tort right here as well. This is this is probably my favorite shaped colony in the studio. I was gonna say the same thing. Yeah. That one just has a really cool shape to it. Basically have just uh, been trying to maintain this tank and keeping it looking how it looked when uh, Jake was here. So yeah, 
All right, let's move yep. on. All right, all right, here's the Australian tank. Still doing quite well. Yeah, I think the biggest thing with this tank is when Jake was escaping it. Yeah. And everybody in the comments kind of had their doubts about this yeah. big wall. You know, but when you see homophilia like this in the wild, they're growing. Yeah, on a wall on a like wall. that. Yeah. And, they, and I, I, I was also a little skeptical too because you always see scolies on the sand bed in the hobby but it actually has come together quite nicely. Yeah, and there's a lot of corals that grow really good on like a slant like that. Yeah. Like, like especially like Blastome Mertletti, that's a coral that I find grows on like, uh, like slants and stuff like that, or even underneath other corals entirely yeah. very well, so. On to the next. Yeah, on to the next one. Tell me a little bit about the fish only system. There's not as many fish as I remember in here. Yeah, so a few of them were rehomed to a friend of the studio, Rob Muget. He's going to take great care of the butterflies that he took out of here. This is probably one of the lower maintenance tanks in the studio. Uh, just gets a big water change once a month to keep nitrates down. Yeah. At the moment, there's no crazy fish in here. The black tang also found a new home as well, so that guy's no longer in here. It's probably one of the, the one of the tanks that the, there's the least amount going on in the yeah. studio. Yeah, the para is awesome. Uh, and then the clown trigger, of course, has a ton of personality. It's one of my favorite fish in the studio. Yeah. But, uh, All right, let's move on. Well, I think this is a lot of people's favorite tank in the studio. I remember when Jake set this up, uh, just having those like, I'm not sure how this is going to look, but then it's all come together. And again, and it's Jake knows best. And here we are with this amazing tank with the mangroves. Yeah. And I've actually cut these mangroves down a bit. Uh, cause Jake wanted to keep them kind of bonsai out. He actually wanted less mangroves, but since Jake put these in there himself, I'm going to try and keep them in here. I love the misting system. Obviously the gigantic sarcophyton in here, this huge toadstool that I think a lot of people when they saw, uh, at Reefstock thought this might be the weeping willow, yeah, but it is not. It is not. One another, of my favorites. another part is these, these mangrove roots are just, they're killing it in huge. here. Huge. And I love that there's actually, it looks to be like there's a leather growing on one of the mangrove roots back here. Yeah, yeah, there is. That is cool. That is cool, yeah. I didn't even notice that, that that capnella is growing back there. Yeah. That is very cool. And yeah, but uh, this tank is actually about to get a little bit of trimming itself. We're going to take out one of these leathers and find a new home for it somewhere else in the studio. Another thing Jake wanted to put into this tank was that blue carpet anemone. Um, so maybe we'll get that guy in here eventually. It'd definitely have to take out some, some corals and uh, move a lot of things around. But ah, yeah, I that is something tank. that he wanted to do. This tank is awesome. All right, so here's the kitchen sink tank. This is one of my favorite tanks in the studio. It is mainly SPS now. I will, I will admit that. <laughs> Besides, you know, like it depends what you consider a turban area, I guess. I love the branching cephastria. Yeah, right here. pink and green branching cephastria right there is awesome. I also really like this turban area right here, like the the purple and green polyps. It gets really, really fluffy. These lights just came on. Not all the way out yet. Yeah. This is a, this is like basically the only tank that we put bird's nests in anymore in the studio because they grow so fast. Uh, like this is a frag that I just added at Restock. This is the Reefworks green uh, shimmer bird's nest. I got that from ReefWorks, uh, which is a, a place, a maintenance company down in Texas. And there's actually an article that Jake wrote several years ago on this bird's nest. And when I saw it at Restock and I heard the story from the guy, I decided that it was something that needed to be added to the studio because Jake loves bird's nest. And I've never seen a bird's nest like that where it's green on green. Yeah. Uh, so that's one that I added to the, to the tank here. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, this, like I said, is one of my favorite tanks in the studio. Here we have the Fimbrophilia slash Euphilia garden, also doing very well. The Aptasia in this tank are also doing very well, something that we are working on right now. Galaxias are still thriving in the back there, mounting on the, mounting on the back glass. The one back here too. No. Yeah, that one is also supposed to be on the back glass. He's going to go back up on the back glass. <laughs> this Lithophylon right here, this is actually from me, so... You know, I'm pretty proud of it. Looks Jake, great. Jake got this from me years ago. Yeah, Again, everything so. is just doing so well. You yeah, know, yeah, and I mean, fluffy and yeah, yeah. And after Jake left us, it was definitely lacking some TLC, but things are coming back in full force in this place. Yeah. So, 
Love that. Yeah, we got Acan Pachyceptas up here, some Acan Echinatas right next to them, if you'll notice how they're almost touching, but everything is still doing fine. Yeah. When, when people were describing these as Lobos, that's when people would like <laughs> put them next to something and they would eat the entire coral next to them. They'd be like, what the heck? Like, yep. um, but yeah, the Echinatas and stuff are doing really good in here. We got some Ganiastrea moon brains down here. And uh, this tank is, you know, definitely doing good as well. So uh, everything's growing and filling in. And for me, seeing these, the, you know, the moon corals and things at the LFS, a lot of times you pass them up because there's yeah. maybe two or three polyps on a frag. But seeing them, yeah, when they colony, dome out like this, it's it's they're gorgeous. Yeah, they're gorgeous. Great. Again, everything looks great. Let's uh, let's move on to the flats. Yeah, the flats. The first thing that was ever in here. So the biggest thing with these two flats is keeping things from stinging each other. I'll basically use these tanks as like a shuffling area. Yeah. If something needs to be taken out of a display or we get a new coral in, they'll go into here first before uh, you know we figure out exactly what we're doing. This is one of those tanks where you go in and you can just look at different sections of it for days and see something new, you know? Right. So the, explain to me, because I, I know people are going to have questions about it, the third flat is empty. Yeah, so it's still there. And basically, the only reason it's empty is because we didn't need it right now. Polo Reef took a lot of it, or bought a lot of it. Yeah, Polo Reef, it actually, he got about 20 large colonies, which was basically this whole flat. Yeah. And so we were able to consolidate I'm sure that flat will come online once again because corals grow and uh, you know we're gonna keep as many of them here as the, at the studio as we can. Yeah, uh, let's go on over to the mode system and check out uh, what's going on over there. Yeah, all right, sweet, sounds good to me. The, uh, the gigantic blue carpet. Mm-hmm, the, yeah, the big old blue carpet. We got our Ritter Eye anemone over here, a rainbow pizza anemone in the back. Bubble tip land. Yep, we got Nexus Bursts in there. We've got Colorado Sunbursts, and we also have Chicago Sunbursts. But like I said, the Chicago's aren't the happiest in there. I'm probably gonna move those guys out of here pretty soon, put them in their own system where they're the only anemone. Um, down here, we've got some like nice Hillays and Bower Bankies, and then just like some random stuff. But yeah, we got the Chalice Palace down here. We got the, we got like a little shroom room down there. Uh, with some random corals mixed in. The Chalice Palace is one of my favorite things in the, in the store, I mean in the, in the shop here. This is the Christmas tree worm tank. Uh, there's all kinds of stuff going on in here right now. <laughs> uh, there's like a little micro lord ga ga uh, garden right here. Uh, we got some Astria poras over here. Uh, snake polyps are some of my favorites. There's three different varieties there. Slowest growing thing ever. <laughs> like it's insane. He's say, had this is probably the biggest uh colony I've seen in a while. Yeah, and like he's had the St. Pa the St. Patrick's Day polyps probably more like eight years or something like that now, and mm. they're still, you know, it's just like this little almost frag-sized colony. Yeah. Definitely looks interesting. And obviously all the Christmas tree worms. Christmas tree worms, which are currently growing faster than the parietes that they are living in. So that's why they're kind of yeah. like on these tube little sections kind of jutting upwards. <laughs> this is probably my second or third favorite tank in here. Yeah. It's, it's so interesting. I, I love all the different colors that the Christmas tree worms take on. Right. You know, and, the, and that symbiotic relationship with the varieties and right, 100%. it's just such a cool thing, you know? Yeah, and this is another tank that needs a little bit of a reset, you know, um, but we'll, we'll get there. We will get there. We've, we've done that to the peninsulas and we'll, we'll get to all the tanks in the studio here shortly, yeah. so. So yeah. All right, we've got one more tank to show and I'm very excited about this. So yeah. let's go head on over to the 400. Sweet. All right, here we are at the 400 and it looks a little different. This is the tank that Jake installed two closed loops on. There's one underneath each rock structure. He built like a PVC structure that went above each one of the closed loops and then he put a basket over the intake for each closed loop. Yeah. And he was, you know, always messing around with ways to kind of cover it up but being very as minimalistic as possible. And he only wanted to, you know, like he kind of wanted to let the corals aquascape this tank. He wanted to put maybe like 30 corals in here and kind of let them just get huge and massive and look like an actual reef. Yeah. Um, and uh, that's still the goal with this tank. Uh, we got it scaped so we, the closed loops can still function how they're supposed to. There's big openings on either side on the inside. So the water can kind of get blasted and shot like side by side with each other and create a little gyre here in the middle. Yeah. I think one of the things when you're taking over such a large facility like this and 
and caring for these huge tanks is to be like, okay, this one wasn't really set up. Let's just take it down and move on. Yeah. But I like that you took it upon yourself to be like, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna make this happen. I'm gonna do what Jake wanted to do. And you escaped it out. This is the this is the most I've seen done with it in a long time. So. Yeah, I'm excited to see what we can do with this tank for yeah, sure. For I sure. can't. I can't wait to see so how this thing turns. out. We just out. gotta figure out lights. We'll get that figured out here in the next uh, probably month or so. So yeah. Very cool. Well, Jack, I appreciate you taking us through. I know there's been just endless amounts of change that has happened over the last year or so. And yeah. So thank you for your dedication and and keeping all of the things that you know Jake wanted in this studio alive so yeah I mean I'm I'm having an awesome time doing it so yeah well yeah. appreciate your uh, your dedication your efforts and thanks for the tour man yeah of course appreciate it for those wondering it was an absolute honor to be in that studio we got a chance to go over reef stock but it was different because it was packed with people this was just a select few of us as a hobbyist who followed Jake's teachings for years, I never thought that I would ever step foot to see Jake's genius in person. And trust me, I do not take that lightly. In the industry, Jack is pretty well known, but I know to the average hobbyist, he isn't. He owns Merman's Reef in Denver, Colorado, and him and his team have kept that studio looking immaculate. Parameters are finally being monitored again, pests are being controlled, and we can only hope that Jake is smiling down from above. And if you want more Reef Talk in your life, make sure to subscribe to the Reef Therapy Podcast. You can find it on the Reef Therapy YouTube page, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your favorite podcatcher. If you could support the channel, like and subscribe and hit that bell notification so you know whenever we post new videos. We'll see you in the next one. And we miss you, Jake.